Today's video, Boners and Biceps by Ali G. Welcome to this channel. If you want to learn more about the most cutting edge science-based information in the world of hormone optimization, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Hey everyone, welcome to the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. I'm Danny Bossa, joined today with Ali Gilbert. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Finally! <laughs> From Connecticut. How are you doing, Ali? I'm doing well amidst the uh, Armageddon. How about you? Uh, well, I've been staying in for uh, several days and uh, not shaving. I'm living the caveman life. Yeah, getting in touch with my inner caveman. Dude, I feel really pale. Like my spray tan place closed, my eyelash place closed. Like it's first world problem. <laughs> <laughs> Are you using a filter now to give yourself some tone or? I, I have a pink lamp. So I'm like, thank uh... God for that thing. Yeah. I'm looking at me and you and I'm looking a little pale and it's like I have lights to light, light it up because otherwise it's too dark but now I look like hey at least we I have makeup. women have makeup I mean you, you no. could use makeup yeah now you look like the Italian and I look like the white boy from down south right now so I like that I take that as a compliment thanks for that <laughs> so um Allie Gilbert uh if you haven't heard of her she's I mean she's everywhere she's literally everywhere so <laughs> Got to have heard from her. Uh, she's a coach. She's a trainer. She does lots of talks uh, on all these subjects that we talk about on this channel. Uh, she does a lot of work with men over 40. Uh, so she likes the older guys, not so much the young guys, I guess. <laughs> no, there's got to be a reason for that. We're going to get to that. Um, so, Ali, tell me how you got into training and coaching men over 40. Just to start. Uh, it's a great niche, right? So... Um, it's funny because I actually, you know, came from a strength and conditioning background and we all want to train athletes. And I was like, all right, who are the athletes in my area that will actually number one, be able to afford training and actually take it seriously. And those are golfers. So I became a golf fitness professional back in 2008. And then that naturally led to more men as a clientele. And then along that, I started to have to do nutrition coaching and then learning about hormones because as you know, men never go to the doctor unless it's an absolute dire emergency or it has something to do with the boner, which I learned very quickly that they are very misinformed about. So being an advocate for men's health seemed like this is the natural road to take because it was so socially acceptable for women to be like, all right, menopause, HRT. And then when guys got older, they're like, I think I take DHEA, but I don't know, but maybe I'll take like 150 milligram. And I'm like, where are you reading this? Like, you know, so long story short, that's how I ended up in specializing in men over 40 because, you know, they really need that help. And I think that being a female and being in this field works because I'm not like the nagging wife pushing them to go to the doctor or dragging them. And I'm also a female who's saying, listen, if you experience some of these issues that men experience, you know, such as erectile dysfunction, or they feel like they have low T, it's okay. And it's actually, you know, okay to talk about too. And even though I say men over 40, I do actually have, as you know, a handful of guys in their 20s and 30s who experience the same symptoms due to this epidemic of low T. And we, when we say epidemic now, we can't just refer to low T. It has to be freaking coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I got easy ahead. I got the coronavirus. Damn it. Double, yeah, I know. I got the In five years, wedding. we'll be laughing at this. We'll oh, like, oh, yeah, man. I remember that. Oh, yeah, because I had to move my wedding next month to July. Yeah. I know. I oh, won't God. forget that. Oh. Hopefully, but, five months and not five years, we'll be laughing about it. Um, yeah, I know. Anyways, <laughs> do you find that, that men have uh, an. An easier time opening up to you about this kind of thing than they would potentially to other men or um i get asked that a lot and i think yeah because like men talking about this with other men seems to turn into more of an ego thing and i don't mean that in a demeaning way at all i just mean it as a fact um when they talk about it it's not necessarily at the vulnerability type of level that they would with me and i say it as matter of fact like i'm not like Oh, hi, I'm Allie. Um, I know you're here for training, but how's your boner in the morning? So it doesn't start that way, but you know, in the health industry, like you have to do a lot of digging and you know, when golfers come to me, it's usually 
golf fitness means I want to look good naked and very rarely. And I say very rarely, meaning guys over like 74 really care about how they hit the ball and all that and not care about what they look like physically. But most of my guys, oh yeah, I want to hit the ball farther. You know, I want to work on my golf muscles. And then it turns into how do I get rid of my six or how do I get my six pack and, you know, look a certain way. So when I talk to them about this, then we get into like, you know, the lifestyle stuff and how they sleep and their diet and um, their recreational activities. And then I talk about, you know, in a very medical speak, uh, morning erections and libido and all that stuff. Cause those are all biofeedback markers as to how somebody is living their life outside of the gym. Because mm -hmm. in the gym, I can only control one variable with the fitness program. So outside of the gym, there's a whole hell of a lot of things that happen that really affect their progress. So, so I find it easy. Um, and I do get more direct messages than necessarily people who comment on posts and say like, Oh, I have this. Can you help me with this? So, right. Yeah. So is that kind of way it happens? It'll come to you first for the, the physical stuff. And then it just leads in, like you said, into the diet and into the, into the hormones. Do you, do you kind of address kind of one at a time? You start them with the fitness thing and then look at other things or is, are you looking at everything from a whole right away? Um, well, it's funny cause I do in-person training and coaching as well. So my guys in person are, are mostly golfers. And then I end up talking about this stuff anyway. And they don't know me as what I'm known online. They, they know as, oh, okay, she does nutrition and golf fitness. The people online know me for more of the TRT type of stuff and being like a hormone optimization. I say men's health specialist because like I'm not a doctor, you know, the drill. People think we're doctors and we're not. I just play one on Facebook. So I tell them, you know, I'm not a medical professional, but I work with them. And um, from that standpoint, they'll come to me for either direct help from a hormone optimization standpoint or nutrition and or training. So it's kind of like two different demographics who are very similar. And so when I do a consult, um, everybody purchases it online and then they get an intake form. And I talk about pretty much everything on there because I want them to know some of the stuff I'll bring up. So if, if it's a male, it's um, any history of steroid use, any vasectomies, do they have children? Have they uh, thought about TRT and then like past traumas in life? So have they had a TBI or have they had, you know, any type of emotional trauma or stuff like that? Because then you kind of know that could impact the way they handle or have a relationship with food or exercise or body image, because men deal with this just as much as women do. They just don't talk about it as much. So um, depending on how open the person wants to be on the first date, I'll say, um, <laughs> or how deep we'll get into it. But usually I have guys that really open up to me very much who have cried on Skype calls. And then I have guys who are just very, you know, set in what they'll allow me to know. And then you know, want to continue on. So both are cool. I don't mind. So. And then do you get kind of like a third party uh, physician or something in uh, involved with this? And you, you will kind of say, you're going to go speak to this person. And do you, like, how do you not being a doctor, how do you go about helping these guys out? Let's say on the hormone side of things, once you've made your assessment. Yeah. yeah so it's, um, as you know, legally, there's, I have a very strong waiver. My, my assistant made that very um, bulletproof to not allow me to get in trouble. So they can provide me with lab work that they've had done. And I will give them my opinion on it and whether or not they need more. And depending on where they live, I'll either suggest they fly to see a medical professional who may be close to them, or if they have a doctor they have a good relationship with, because some people are like, yeah, you know, my guy will do anything I want, cool. <clears throat> Here's a list of labs to get done, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then it's a question of, okay, does this practitioner know what they're doing in the sense of frequency of injection and dosage and all that stuff? I've had guys that have told their doctor what I do and they're like, oh, that's awesome. I would love to learn more, which is like shocking. Um, and then <laughs> nice. I have, you know, yeah, most guys are like, oh, my doctor says it causes cancer. You know, I'm like, okay scratch next doctor so it's kind of helping them you know weave through the medical system and being like listen 
you're going to have to spend some money here. So it's not going to be like the sky's covered by your insurance and this isn't, you know, the whole drill and hopefully finding somebody that will, you know, be workable. And then I can help advise them on, you know, their dosage frequency and stuff like that in conjunction with their doctor locally okay. in Greenwich. Okay. I have a guy that I can be like, listen, I want this guy to do these labs and let's do these supplements if needed. And would you mind doing this dosage and this ester and this frequency? So that's awesome to have, but not everybody can come to Connecticut. I don't blame them. There's really nothing really here. <laughs> it's not like I'm in LA and we have nice beaches. So. Well, there's Ali Gilbert. How bad can it be? I know. I mean, I'm here. Yeah, we are like a half hour from New York City. So it's really not. There you go. There you go. Okay. So you're basically doing kind of like, like it's a bit, maybe a little bit similar like uh, we're doing in our Facebook group to an extent where guys are coming in and say, this is what my doctor's having me do. These are the issues I'm having. Does this make sense to you? What are your thoughts? And then some of yeah. us will chime in and say, you might want to consider this for these reasons. They can go back to the doctor or get them referred to a doctor if, if need be. That kind of sort of type thing, but obviously you're taking them on as clients with the, the whole nutrition and the, and, the, and the training and whatnot. Right. Which, you know... <clears throat> A lot of them want to know what can I do nutritionally and training wise that will elevate my levels. We know that it doesn't really do anything that they'll automatically feel like Thor, but it will get them on the track to feeling that much better when they do approach the TRT and go on to that. So um, usually guys diets are a mess. A lot of men don't eat enough for what they're doing activity wise. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like to train often, but they don't necessarily train hard. And in the fitness industry, we've noticed because the pendulum swings very quickly, many ways. We went from, you know, like the 80s and 90s, very much body part splits to corrective exercise, like everyone's broken and delicate, so we can't lift that hard to, well, shit, we stopped lifting, we should start lifting hard again to high intensity, everything. So now a lot of people are coming to us doing only high intensity metabolic circuits, kettlebell circuits, and no one's actually doing strength training, which is like, you know, rests, resting like 30 seconds at minimum to like three minutes, which those types of rest periods, when you're doing deadlifts or bench or squatting, that yields a hell of a hormonal response. Right. So no one's actually building muscle. They're just doing very cardio-based workouts, which is burning them out, elevating cortisol all day. They don't eat enough to fuel this lifestyle. And then they kind of burn themselves out. They're catabolic, that whole thing. So it's kind of pulling exercise away, but replacing it with maybe more walking and then lifting really heavy and intense, which will give you that buzz, as they like to call it and then eating appropriately. And usually I tell them how much I eat and then that makes them feel really bad. And then they <laughs> eat more. <laughs> cause That's I'm funny. like, dude, I'm eating over 200 grams of protein. And they're like, oh, cause usually they're like, oh, 150 grams of protein. Oh my God. And I'm like, That's where we're starting. We're gonna go up, you know? So I'm very much like, I'm not a trainer who came from a yoga background or any of that. I hate that shit personally, honestly. If whoever has the attention span and can do it, awesome you know, not trying to speak bad about it at all, but like I suck at yoga. It's probably why I hate it, but I'm more of like a bro where I came from like the strength and conditioning field. So I love to teach people how to lift correctly. And I think that we've kind of lost that art, you know? So it's addressing that, like, this is what you should do in the gym. Like, yeah, you're going to sweat, but you know what? The next day you may not sweat and you may just be doing three to five reps of a squat. Right. Is it kind of like a bit of that, the, the, like the, the, the muscle beach mentality where everything was form and this and that. And now it's just, everything has just gotten so overly complicated because people are just trying to find an easy way out. You know, there's must be some easier way I could just do this and get, you know, a lot of, a lot of people I find are just going back to those roots the way they used to do them way back in the day. It's uh it's tough. There's so many schools of thought. And then you have so many guys on YouTube that are that different, you know, uh, high intensity and low volume and higher volume and lower intensity. And you don't really know what to believe anymore. I know. Uh, yeah. Frankly, I've, I've tried a whole bunch of different ones. Not that I'm, you know, jacked or anything, but 
I've always noticed just lifting really heavy with low reps has always worked really well for me compared to literally anything yeah. else and makes me feel the best. Yeah. And it, it's empowering. And, and I think if anything, it's the consistency over time. So with our attention span in the modern day, you know, people just don't give it enough time, especially women, like women will not do like a strategic, you know, three to four months of actually eating maintenance calories and just shoot for PRs. Because if you really focus on performance in the gym, all the aesthetics are like a byproduct. But, you know, a lot of people just want to diet year round and, and the body can't do that. You can't tone muscle you haven't built. And right. this goes for the guys too. And, you know, when you can get guys to lift heavy where they realize they're not hurting themselves then that's very empowering for them too. And I get like, everyone is confused. Like it's confusing to me as to why, why are we going back and forth with all this stuff? Because there is so much out there. And it's funny because like a lot of my online guys who have lost their gym access are now freaking out because they're like, I don't have heavy enough weights at home. I have to order barbells. I got to order the heavy stuff. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> you know, that's what we want. So there, there's a lot of tools and there's a lot of different approaches to getting to the end result and they all work, but they all don't work for as long as we want them to. You do have to switch things and you do have to not confuse the muscles, but you do have to enter times of eating more and then, you know, exercising a little bit appropriately, maybe not seven days a week. And then times where you're eating less and maybe you're training less because you're traveling or a stressful time or whatever, but it, it's this go hard, you know, or go home mentality beast mode all the time. It's not going to work. You're going to end right. up regressing. So. And are you doing kind of a mix of like the heavier stuff and then also the lighter stuff, higher volume, or are you pretty much just focusing on the heavy stuff primarily? Just out of curiosity. Um, so it depends. Like one of the questions I ask is what is their realistic um, ability to uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Commit to the gym. So if they have three days a week, you know, okay. They have two days a week. Okay. If they have four days, four days is really the maximum somebody needs to train, you know, unless they have a special event or stepping on stage or something like that. I don't tend to work with competitors. So a lot of my guys are three to four days a week. And then it'll be a hybrid program of um, like a five by five to start mm -hmm. off and with a compound lift, like a deadlift or squat and then some hypertrophy work and minimizing the rest periods to, you know, 30, 60 seconds. And then the five by five, obviously will be a longer rest period and a lot of bro stuff. Cause I still think like direct arm work and stuff definitely works. And then if they have extra time, they can do some cardio. Cause I think aerobic work really does have a place. Cause we shifted from that like whole fuck cardio movement to hit everything. And now people, you know, can't recover in between sets. So yeah. that that's really just aerobic. So you increase your aerobics. I mean, you know, your resting heart rate will go down, your blood pressure will go down, you'll sleep better. So um, if they have time to add that in and then, you know, shoot for some walking during the day, I tend to not prescribe steps because then people get anal if they don't hit that step mark and then that increases stress. So it's really, how can we manage stress the best around their lifestyle, get the, enough food in and then train the way they want. So, right. Okay. So Jacked and, Jack and tan boners, biceps, the whole thing. There you go. <laughs> what else is there really in this world? You got right good now, boners, you got good biceps. You're, 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 you're good. Um, so I guess diet side of thing, it's going to be, again, it's going to will very much depend on the, on the goals, on the person, on their, where they're at, where they're headed and so on and so forth. I don't know if you can get it too much into probably that thing. So um, what do you want to discuss on the hormone side of things? Anything in particular, some of the stuff you're seeing on a regular basis, maybe some of the weird stuff. I just did a three part uh, series, with Jordan Grant, uh, Dr. Jordan Grant about some of the, the dumbest, craziest stuff we're seeing. Um, so I don't know if you want to chime in on any of that type of stuff. I mean, the funny thing is like my gynecologist, who's a guy, he specializes in men's hormonal, uh, hormone replacement and women's. But when I go see him, we, I, I go for like an hour and a half and we just sit and talk about some of the crazy stuff. 
and he's a big like disciple of Dr. Ruzier. And so he understands the mm -hmm. whole aromatase uh, issue. And, you know, we talk about the local doctors who are being prescribed. Everyone's getting 200 milligram sip every 10 days with a gram, a gram, a milligram of aromatase every day. Every day. Every day. And that's among two different doctors in town. And I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? And, and a few of these guys who have seen these doctors are trainers in town. And they text me and they'll be like, Ali, I cannot get a heart on. And I'm like, why are you taking so much Arimidex? Well, I was sent out the door in case I get gyno. In case you get gyno. And I'm just uh... like, mother of... Uh, and you know, you can't legally tell somebody to stop a medication, but you can strongly encourage... And Very strongly. As soon uh, as, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah strongly encouraged as yeah. in like, stop that shit right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm notorious for strongly encouraging people to get off their AIs because I have actual evidence to yeah. get them to dig up the, I just bitched out a clinic on a video just recently because they were giving a guy four milligrams, four milligrams of Arimidex a week. A two milligrams of Z2 was like in the low twenties and they gave him another two. And he came in our Facebook group. He's like, I don't feel well. I'm like, well, duh. I once tried one milligram, like back when I didn't know better, tried just one milligram a week. And I got out of bed and I felt like an old man. My joints were hurting. Libido was like, uh, no. Directions oh are like, God. no. And I did not feel well. And then I finally came to my senses. But a milligram a week, uh, a milligram okay. a day is just, I, like they'll kill him. They'll literally kill him. Like that, those guys are <laughs> they're gonna die it, it's from that bad. kind of a dose. One of one of my clients, I don't train him anymore, but um, probably because we disagree on everything. But he was an ER doctor who went to like pellet camp. I call it like it's like CrossFit. You know, you go to a CrossFit seminar for two days, all of a sudden you can become an owner. So he goes to the pellet workshop, and now that's like all he sees are dollar signs and blah blah blah. I gave him um, several different. Uh, documents to read as to why that might not be the best idea. Whatever. Can't talk him out of it. Wanted to start a concierge business by himself. Two weeks later, he's like calling me. Oh my God, this guy, he gained like 15 pounds. I don't know what to do. I'm going to put him on Litro, like, you know, just to calm him down. But like, he's freaking out about the scale. And I was like, D what happened? He's like, oh, I gave him a pellet and blah, blah, blah. And then he calls me again about like a woman freaking out. And clearly he has no idea how to control the different frequencies that people metabolize this. And I, again, had to have a you know, conversation with him and I'm telling him, I'm like, well, what are you doing for lab work and stuff like that? And like, he didn't, he didn't know what reverse T3 was. He didn't know what pregnenolone was like, and I'm just like, dude, dude oh my God. Like, how do you advise somebody that just like, doesn't see the light? And I'm training this guy and he's asking me my opinion and I give it, but also it's a very weird line because he's paying me to train him and I'm telling him everything he's doing is wrong. Nobody likes to be told what they're doing is wrong, let alone a man who feels he's pretty successful in a certain town by, you know, a female telling him like, yeah, everything you know is wrong. Everything you know is dumb and stupid, but. I oh still don't God. get how these professionals get into, oh, God, professionals, how these individuals decide on this as a career choice and say this is what i'm best at because you know you want to do what you're best at so they say this is what i'm going to do for a living and this is how i'm going to make my money and just not know about some of these fundamental things that the regular schmo can just go on google and just look up like very quickly and find out about and i, I it's just is it for the money or is it just do they know better, but they're pretending they're not to, to make the money, or they just don't know better because they're that ignorant? Like, I it, it was a little bit of both, I think, because I asked them, I, I, and I said, honestly, I said, how much do you make per insertion, and how long does it take? And he said, it's about 15 minutes, and I make $950. Okay. There you go. There's the answer. Yeah. It's like, There's all right. the answer. I'm in the wrong line the of work. ER or 15 minutes of tic-tac in your butt. Okay. Yeah. And then what happens? Once it's in, it's in. Yeah. It come, I mean, you're not going to control how much you're metabolizing. You're not going to control how long. You're not going to control levels. You can't tweak anything. They're in there. Unless yeah. you go and get them pulled out, but that's it.
it's not like taking an injection. You're taking 200 milligrams weekly. Oh, I think this is too much. Let me drop it down to 150. Like, okay, I'm good. Like, that's it. They're, I don't know. It just, and it's um, very similar to fitness professionals. Doctors do not get an education in business. So when they go to set up a practice, from what I've understood, having, you know, talked to a bunch of them in town, like they're, they're okay, I don't know what labs to do. So what are the popular ones? What are they selling at A4M? I'll do that with having absolutely no background in it. And I understand like the specialty labs can yield a shit ton of money. At least in Connecticut, you can mark them up whatever you want. In New York, you can't. It's like a disaster. But like, say, you know, I don't know, Spectracell, you know, their uh, um, mineral test is like $200. In Connecticut, you can sell it for 14000 if you want. I mean, Holy cow. it doesn't even matter. Like, literally, there's no legal um, implications on that. So they uh, kind of want to delve into that. And then it's like IV therapy. And then it's like, oh, peptides. Like, it's like, ooh, what's hot now? But they, they don't know enough about each one to really control shit when it goes sideways. So, and then bringing it all together so that it's a profitable business. It's really, yeah. you know. It, because it, these are the guys that are gonna do the cookie cutter type approach. I'm gonna get a patient, and I'll automatically put them on, you know, this many pellets, this much AI, go. Next one, this many pellets, that's, that's, our, that's our optimal thing and, and go. You know, yeah. but it doesn't work that way. It never works that way. And I was like, why are you putting this guy in letrozole? He's like, well, he, he gained all this weight. I, and, and I'm like, okay, did you tell him it's mostly water? Like he's never been on testosterone. And he's like, yeah, but he's just freaking out about the scale. So we have to get it down. And I said, okay. So then what happens when you crash his estrogen and he feels even worse? Like it's like those steps. And then I'm like, well, you're not even paying me for telling you all this. Like, it's so bizarre. It, it's really, I wish there was like a hybrid position for what we do where, you know, you may not need the medical degree. And like, you know, I've thought of that, but then I'm like, all right, if you have a, a professional you trust, it saves you a lot of money. You just need a prescription pad and a good right. relationship. So right. I feel like we'll get there eventually. And the more that people like us as health coaches enter that world, we're not trying to take over because there are many doctors that feel threatened, but we're just trying to add a dimension to it that they just don't have the time nor the resources or energy to cover, which is all mm -hmm. the lifestyle stuff. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I have no interest at all in like keeping any doctor out of a job. I'm trying to find the ones that actually know what they're talking about. So if somebody asks, do you know, a good dog, well, there's this one, there's this one, there's this one. And, and the more, the better, because there's so many guys that come to me like, I need a good doc, and you're looking where they're from, and like, I don't know anyone on the area, and then they got to do telemedicine or whatever else. But yeah, if they were all good, then great. We're here because it just isn't the case, and we're just seeing stuff that just is so far from what it should be. And not just, it's not just our opinions, it's like, this is wrong on so many levels, and you just feel compelled to help these people out because they're just. Some of the I stuff know. you see is just unbelievable. The horror stories. Some some girl said, a friend of hers, she's like, yeah, her doctor, her gynecologist told her to take um, injections of testosterone every day, like subcutaneously. And I was like, is this Dr. Jacobson? And she's like, yeah. I was like, oh, that's my gynecologist. He knows what he's doing. And she, you know, that's not a known protocol. So she thought it was the weirdest thing for a woman. And I'm like, no, no, no. It's a totally for a woman, cool. yeah. You know, like, but you, women up like around here are usually either getting creams, which will do also, or there's some doctors that'll do like 25 milligram injections, which is a lot for a woman who yeah. if they'll aromatize it right away. That could be a problem or they'll grow a beard or something like, you know, so it, there's really a mismanagement of that, but that's like the women's side. But it was funny because I was like, I knew exactly who she was talking about based on how his protocols are set. Um, but it's a shame that it's like, I wish I knew in every single state. Oh yeah. Go see this person. Like the, literally that's number one, what I get asked all the time. We had a woman come in our group. Uh, I, I swear this is true. I can, I'll show it to you. She was put on testosterone and one milligram of arimidex. I, 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 I couldn't make this shit up if I tried. He put her on a basically 20 milligrams, but you have to take, you have to take an AI. 
to a woman. How old was she? Uh, I don't know, 40? So, okay. So she probably has like lower estrogen anyway. And then I'm just trying to think of like, what Why would, would you give a woman why? an eye unless she's got breast cancer? You're, he's giving your, he's putting her on TRT. Obviously he puts all his men on TRT with an AI. I figured, well, that I guess that's what I give to a girl, but I just give her a lower dose. We give her an AI. Yeah. So yeah, we see stuff like that too. You it's know, a crazy the, world. The drugs that belong on the market, they have no idea. Like, like Anovar is actually an FDA approved drug for mm -hmm. uh, bed sores and muscle wasting. And when I had, um, when I had gotten implants in, I got them taken out. But when I got them in, I was taking Anavar so I would heal very quickly. And they go through the whole protocol of all the meds you're on at the hospital, right? And so when I told them like Oxandrolone, they're like, can't find it in the computer. What is it? And I'm like, try Oxandra. And they're like, what? Like, I'm like, oh my, never mind. I'm on nothing. <laughs> like, but that's, that's what you should be giving cancer patients and stuff. But, you know, God forbid we give them things that make them retain muscle and become anabolic because you know uh but and then i've got a bunch of guys that have actually had um prostate cancer they've had the surgery they and you know there's no winning that battle with those doctors because these are the best surgeons in new york city and you know they know everything and it's like okay again i don't want to mess with anyone's prostate cancer protocols but i'll just send you the studies to show your physician. And there's been like one physician who was very open about it, but that's a uphill battle as well. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. So again, the training, the diet, the TRT, we went on a, guys, sorry, we went on a tangent about all the crazy stuff we've heard, but it's just, there's just so much of it that comes out and we're, we're seeing every day that it, it, it's hard not to bring up some of these things sometimes. So, um, the, most of these consults, you, you, uh, you're obviously doing a lot of them at local guys in your area, and then you do, I guess, the rest over Skype. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And just talk about everything imaginable, put them in touch with whoever you need to, and, and that's pretty much that. Yeah, and then I'll do, um, I do online training coaching through a, an online platform that I have now, which I'm doing a lot more of now that everybody's lost the gym access. And then I do online nutrition coaching and I have three month and I have 12 month programs. So I, I prefer people sign up for the year because then it's playing the long game. Um, you know, I do have a couple female clients and it's really the guys that will understand that it's a longer approach. So I price it very fairly and I make the year program a little bit cheaper because it's a commitment. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there are a lot of guys that have lost weight very rapidly and then gained it back. And then they want to do the same thing. And it's realizing, listen, you've been eating, you know, for some reason, someone decided for women, it's 1200 calories. And for men, it's like 1700. I have no idea who did that. I've tried to look it up. I don't know where it came from. Um, but they never eat enough for like the amount of output. And then, of course, when you add in carbohydrates, you still have to explain that they're going to add weight on the scale because it's water weight, but also they, they've been eating in a deficit for so long. It's no wonder they feel like shit. They have no libido. Like they may or may not have uh, morning wood. Like they just overall feel lethargic. And then they've got belly fat that came out of nowhere. So, all right, we got to get your calories up for a period of time and have that match your training appropriately. That takes a lot longer than a three week transformation. So that's probably a thing that, yeah. The, sorry, the guys have a really hard time grasping when they're when they're feeling this way and they're getting belly fat or getting fat. To tell them you have to eat more, yeah, but I'm getting fat. Am I supposed to eat less because I'm getting fat? And it's like, no, you want to. Yeah, it's it's a crazy thing that guys just don't wrap their brains around sometimes. No, and the, the usual thing is like you know they'll sign up for three months at one at the first time, and then two months into it, we're on a roll. And then all of a sudden they'll have some sort of freak out and then they'll slash their calories and then not tell me for like two weeks. And then I'm like, okay, what happened? Cause I could tell just like, you know, the scale will be all over the place. And then their energy in their check-in form is low and all this stuff. 
and then they'll realize they got to renew another three months and then they start to trust you. Or I have guys who understand what they're getting into based on what I've talked about, which is awesome because all my prices are on, on the website. Like they're fairly high compared to what a regular training program would be online. But I provide a lot of value where I'm constantly in touch with them and, you know, kind of helping them along the way with everything. So right. for them to understand that this is a process is massive because I tell them their health is really what I care most about. And I can get them to lose weight in a month. Anyone can do that but it doesn't mean it's going to stay off. So we don't have a weight loss problem in America. We have a weight regain problem. Then that, that yo-yoing is what really fucks up your metabolism over time and makes it harder. And we've been so spoiled with this rapid fat loss everywhere bullshit. And the biggest loser was really the worst thing like that. Um, with the uh, uh, studies they've done. So they've lost so much weight that in, in six years after the show, the people who gained back 40 kilos plus have still not recovered their metabolic rate from before. Oh, wow. And in order to do that, you have to obviously gain all the lean mass back, but you're going to gain body fat. And then they gained, they gained obviously 40 kilos plus is a lot, and they still hadn't recovered that. And then I, you know, I try to explain that to them and tell them, this is why people who have had bariatric surgery they, they, they never get like lean, you know, they lose a lot of weight, but you don't see them like lean and dry and like jacked because you can't eat more than 1500 calories. So their body just down regulates to that level. Right. So, and then it kind of like, they get it. And then once they start eating more and then focus, I'm like, let's go up in your deadlift over the next few weeks. Oh, wow. I feel amazing. Like, and then they'll say like, I had sex every night this week. Like I'm eating so much and I dropped weight. Like, and then guys tend to like not care what the scale says so much as long as they look a certain way and they're yeah. close, you know, which is the opposite of women. But then when I've got them, you know, loving the way they feel like I have a guy who gained 30 pounds, but his waist stayed the same and he's like freaking jacked. And he came to me doing keto for three years and felt like shit. So we went, we got him up now to 700 grams of carbs and he was losing weight at 500. And I was like, fuck, we got to go up. And he's a big dude, but like still, and now I'm like, all right, we're going to start cutting at 500 grams of carbs. Like, oh, shit. And I'm like, that's like my dream. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. Right. But are you finding that basically people come and, and once they get to a certain point, they're like, okay, I'm starting to look the way I look now. It means I can start slacking off. And that's when it, everything just falls apart or. Oh no, it's more like they trust the process more. And, and then I'm like, okay, good. Let's stay here for a little bit because then if you do have an event or something you want to drop body fat for, it'll happen like that versus you have to diet at calories that make you feel like you just want to die, you know? So it, it's getting the calories up, getting the work capacity up, eating that much for a while. And yes, you may gain some weight. Some guys don't gain weight. Some guys actually lose weight. But getting the calorie intake level up high enough to where your body processes start working again. You know, when it senses that you're not eating enough, well, what's not essential? Okay, erections, uh, hair, you know, energy levels, like all of that is downregulated because the body's like, okay, famine, we don't need to procreate, we can't. So we have to kind of, you know, suppress all that. Once they start eating more, then they feel a lot better. And then they'll realize all the weight they're holding in their stomach wasn't necessarily body fat. It was water retention from the stress that they're putting on doing so much cardio all the time and mm. not lifting and not eating enough and, you know, not managing the stress. So I got a lot of like type a wall street guys that are like psycho. I need to train like nine hours a day and getting them to take workouts out to kind of calm it's a big wake up call. But then I asked them, I'm like, let me ask you this. Is what you're doing right now working? Okay, no. Where else do you have to go? <laughs> do you want to eat even less and then train more than you are right now? Because that's not going to work. Mm -hmm. so, and then they realize they really have no choice, but to kind of narrow that deficit. And it's not as bad as it seems once they get there. But it does suck when you realize like, okay, this is my stress release. 
I can only train four days a week as opposed to seven, but it's going to be better in the long run. Right. You know? I do apologize for jumping a little bit from topic to topic because okay. there's so many things that you do, but could you tell me, generally speaking, what percentage of guys you find that you take on as clients that they need some form of hormone or thyroid optimization? Probably. Like a percentage? A hundred percent? I would say, yeah. If not, right when I take them on, eventually. So, so virtually every guy, you're seeing it really that bad that they're not, you're not seeing guys that you check out their hormones like, oh man, you're great. You're, you're all good. Uh, no, that's a lie. I would say maybe 90%. Like, I mean, I do have guys that come to me that are in like the seven and eight hundreds uh, when they're in their forties and they take very good care of themselves. They rarely drink, they sleep enough. It's my guys that are, you know, sleep is for the week and you know, maybe they just had a baby and, you know, they're just not sleeping as much. Um, but I do have guys who are diabetic, who are overweight, who, you know, don't necessarily lead a healthy lifestyle. I have a guy in person who drinks bourbon almost every day, smokes two packs a day, has one kidney, beat cancer three times and did a physique show. And he's on TRT and he'll never change his ways, but for some reason he's, looking awesome <laughs> so i have all different kinds but i think like eventually every man can benefit from it um i think you know when they're younger like i did have a 22 year old this winter whose test level was like 107 so Ooh. obviously adiposity has a big um contribution to that and lifestyle and all that but again it's only so high that we can get somebody nowadays naturally to where it'll be an exploration as to what the best approach is. Now he happened to go on Clomid, which I think was a great intervention for somebody that age. Um, but when guys come to me and it's like, okay, let's do everything we can to get your lifestyle in order. And then it, it's not necessarily, what does it say on paper, but it's like, how do you feel? Maybe this will help. And I've had guys who have gone on it and actually come off of it because they feel fine off of it, which is right. amazing. So, you know, it's hard to give like a percentage, but I, I like to err on the side of like, I think more guys can benefit than they think they can, but they're just afraid. Gotcha. Anything we didn't talk about that didn't uh, cover? I know I kind of jumped a little bit from here to there, but anything? Um, I think, okay. you know, just to miss the fact that, you know, it's coronavirus and all that. We didn't really want to go. Oh down. yeah. We were talking about that offline. Yeah. Yeah. Why but, don't you tell them what you told me offline about your thoughts about the gyms are closed and. Yes, I have a new hashtag. It's hashtag Corona coitus because everyone should be having sex during this time of quarantine. But however, just like in normal everyday life, there are going to be a lot of guys who are experiencing erectile issues and erectile dysfunction because of the stress levels. And I want them to know you guys, it's okay. Like as women, obviously we have a lot of stress too and it impacts us much differently. So just because two, three weeks ago when stuff wasn't as bad, if you're waking up with a boner every day and now maybe it's a little bit less frequent, it's just stress related. I trust, I really trust me on this. It's not always directly related to your testosterone levels as it may seem. And it doesn't mean your test levels just completely tanked due to coronavirus. It doesn't mean you have the virus <laughs> just because there's right. no correlation with coronavirus and boners that we know of yet. Um, but a way to manage that is to walk as much as possible. You know, most people who say, I don't have time, this is a great test. Who has the balls to go out and actually walk because you're saying you don't have time, but now we have all the time in the world. And even if it's just 10 minutes a day, because that's the one activity that lowers stress hormones and has no impact on hunger. So it can't ramp it up because you're not over cardioing. And then gotcha. understand if you order, you know, a, a set of dumbbells or power blocks that are adjustable, or if you have the room in your garage to get a barbell and some plates, it's an amazing idea or some kettlebells and just stay with the workouts because keeping healthy is, is very important. And it'll actually move the needle a little more with your fat loss. Cause you're going to be getting more sleep if you can, you know, get that on point too. So. Very good point. Today. Good advice. Allie, there's going to be a lot of people are going to be messaging me like, how do I get in contact with her? She's so cool. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I am on Instagram, the Ali Gilbert, A L I G I L B E R T, because uh, Ali G is taken by uh, Borat. And um, uh, uh, Facebook, Ali Gilbert, and I don't go on Twitter really. Like all my posts from Facebook go there, so it may seem like I'm on Twitter, but I probably won't get your message for like three weeks. So Instagram is probably the easiest way to get a hold of me. And that's where sure. I get my most content and do the stories and stuff. So. And my There's only like weird uh, TRT people on Twitter, I find. Right? Yeah, it, like, it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't want to delve into those strange uh, um, uh, constellations. I don't even know what to call it. <laughs> I kind of stay away from Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and then my website is ali-gilbert.com, and that's where you can find all the services I offer and who I am and how strange I am and stuff like that. Cool. Great. Thank you for having me. I think we, uh, you, you, it was about freaking time. I Dude, know. It took forever. I've been asking <laughs> for ages. No, just kidding. Uh, Ali, great. It was uh, fantastic. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Wonderful. And uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. You too.